now before that we never use this term during the whole talk about conversation analysis and its relationship with gender here we have given it a special name we are calling it feminist conversation analysis actually here we combine two perspective together one is feminist perspective and the other is conversation analysis perspective feminism you know this is a political movement if you remember our introductory talk introductory modules when i introduced this term i told you that it was a political movement uh, here Uh, women especially they raise voice against uh, injustices and inequalities about women and they find out solutions uh, through legal system justice system etc etc so that is a political perspective and conversation analysis this is a sociological perspective so when we put them together it becomes feminist conversation analysis this is a, a kind of research methodology uh, you will be introduced to this in this module feminists take interest in issues of gender power injustices and uh, violence and oppression against women feminist ca conversation analysis was introduced to conduct research regarding these gender issues these feminist concerns it was specially introduced for this purpose the feminist researcher does not presuppose anything and then collects evidence from the conversation now you know that in conversation analysis background knowledge previous things history etc of something that has no role in understanding conversation so that's why when a feminist conducts research through conversation analysis he doesn't presuppose something he doesn't come up with some assumed things in in his her mind some uh, values or belief regarding gender and gender practices in society he comes empty minded plain minded though it is practically impossible but it is assumed for the purpose of analysis that uh, uh, we suspend whatever already exists in our mind so uh, this is it never happens that they first make up something in their mind they uh, develop some hypotheses and assumptions and after that they uh, look the uh, conversational data and from that data they just point out the evidences uh, to verify or to reject their hypotheses so women are oppressed uh, women uh, face uh, domestic violence this is their hypothesis and after that during conversation they find out which language cues are available to support this hypothesis rather it doesn't happen that we impose uh, categories on the data in support of our hypothesis what happens conversation reveals unfolds relation of social action with politics with history with culture so we approach conversation data and from data we relate uh, the data with history we say this is part of uh, tradition this is part of politics this is part of culture this is part of age so this is the way feminist conversation analysis is conducted when participants describe themselves now this is the procedure this is the procedure of feminist analysis when participants describe themselves usually in the opening utterances when the talk starts they first of all describe themselves i, I am uh, mr xy i i uh, am uh, a teacher uh, i like this so they introduce themselves and uh, i i face abuse etc they they leave cues and then from those cues uh, we find out 
where gender is involved, where domestic violence is involved, things like that. So, when they describe themselves, introduce themselves in opening utterances, after that, their social categories are known. They are, uh, they, whether uh, they are women, whether they are teachers, whether uh, they are Pakistanis, etc. Sometimes the participants of conversation, they don't describe them directly. Indirectly, they describe themselves and the analyst has to point it out. This description provides addresses and access to common sense cultural knowledge to understand the utterances in a conversation. Now what happens? When in a conversation, a woman says that uh, I am victim of something at my home, so definitely uh, the person who listens to that, the addressee, he would instantly, because of common sense knowledge, the, the knowledge that is shared among the people of the same culture, he would instantly think that, okay, this is, uh, uh, this is home, uh, where uh, somebody uh, abuses this woman and definitely that person would be her husband. So, this is uh, the way uh, the uh, listener or addressee understands, uh, tries to understand the talk of the uh, speaker. How does the analyst know what the talk reveals? He, she knows this through next turn proof policies. Now, how can we know that the addressee has understood what the speaker has told? Because no reference to background, etc. is given. For this purpose, feminist conversation analysts have introduced a procedure and that procedure of analysis is known as next turn proof analysis. Next turn is, what is next turn? Next turn is response to the previous turn. We have said that conversation has a structure, it is series of turns. There is turn taking, there is first turn and then in response to that, there is next turn. So, this is next turn that comes and that follows first turn. And in next turn, you know, always we have response to the first. Okay. The response is co-constructed. It is this response that is proof of participants' giant understanding. So, first is utterance, the question, the uh, inquiry, that can be invitation, etc. And then in, in response to that, you get the second answer and second utterance by the second speaker. So, this is how both utterances together, they show us whether the addressee understood the addresser's uh, point of view or whatever he, she wants to say. This is a task that uh, you would do it. Here you will apply this procedure which I have mentioned which is called next turn proof procedure. You will focus on next turns at in, uh, throughout this dialogue because every next turn uh, would be understood in light of the previous turns. Previous turns would provide a kind of context to understand next turns. Okay. You will find out whether second turns in this dialogue really shows understanding of the addressee. This is a transcript of a dialogue. Here two persons are involved. One is context, the person who is contacted, that can be some uh, service, uh, they, uh, as you call, for example, to some service provider, to some food chain, etc. So, this is called here contact. And in case of this dialogue, the contact is a service that provides legal advice and support to uh, women who face some kind of violence uh, in society. 
the caller is definitely a woman. So these two persons are involved in this conversation. In the left leftmost first column, you see numbers. They are numbers of lines, not number of sentences. So this is the way how transcription for conversation is prepared. Then you have the routine symbols which we have already seen in previous dialogues. So here the talk goes on. You will focus on the opening utterance. You will find out whether there is description of the caller. And after that, you will find out where the person, which next turn shows that the person uh, who is uh, attending the call understands because he is addressee or she is addressee. So which next turn shows that the person uh, who is receiving the call understand the message of the caller. So which words, which cues, which linguistic symbols stress uh, shows this. So you will conduct this task and uh, to understand how feminist conversation analysis is conducted. We conclude that CA helps the feminist researcher to verify feminist stance on issues of inequality. The feminists think that there is inequality, injustice against women in society. So this is their stance. Now to verify their stance, one thing is that they assume, they, uh, they uh, believe in their, uh, for example, intuitions, uh, uh, they are biased, they may be biased in their own opinion. But to, to verify their stance in a scientific way on the basis of data, they can use this methodology of feminist conversation analysis.